Mr. You White, you're not no, listening! No, no, no! Right? They're kicking me out of my house! Who'd have thought that high school burnout Jesse Pinkman would become everyone's favorite meth-making hero? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst things to happen to Jesse Pinkman. You'll see me when he wakes up in the morning, and when he crawls to sleep in whatever rat holes left for him after I shred his house down. For this list, we'll be delving into Jesse's intriguing yet heart-wrenching story in Breaking Bad, from getting bullied by psychotic drug lords to dealing with the loss of loved ones. So get ready for some soul-crushing classics. Number 10. His parents kicked him out twice. On another intervention. Like many of us, Jesse is the kind of person who's constantly trying to measure up to his parents' expectations. While he certainly gets himself into trouble, he's also a lost, confused soul. Jesse was given a proverbial kick in the teeth when his parents kicked him out of their house for a joint that was actually his little brother's. Later, they allowed him to move into his aunt's old house, but kicked him out again after discovering a meth lab in the basement. Son. We can't stop you from ruining your life, but you will not drag us down with you. Vacate the house in 72 hours. Otherwise, your parents have authorized me to contact the authorities. Of course, we now know that Jesse got his own back by blackmailing his parents and buying his aunt's house at a bargain price. Now, I could file a suit and encumber this property indefinitely, or I could start some criminal proceedings, but I don't think any of us want that. now. Do we? Number nine, the stolen ATM ordeal. What the hell am I supposed to do with this? Help me break it open. Take out the money, get paid, get high. Through a series of unfortunate events, Jesse finds himself stuck with two addicts, trying to take back some stolen meth. There's also a jacked ATM machine present, which the two are trying to break into. And not to mention there's a young innocent child there who Jesse is trying to protect. Things go from bad to worse as the two get the upper hand on Jesse, until an argument ends in the child's mother crushing her husband's head in with said cash machine. No no, 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 no. Jesse ends up walking out alive, but he clearly feels guilty about leaving the kid alone. Number 8. He was beat up by Hank. Yo, Adrian. Rocky called. He wants his face back. Jesse plays the role of emotional and physical punching bag numerous times throughout the series. And although Tuco Salamanca gave him a pretty hard time, we've chosen Hank's brutal beating for today's list. After discovering that a caller who claimed to be his wife had been in an accident was lying, Hank assumes that Jesse was behind it and pops around for a visit. You got nothing on me, yo. All right, you can call my lawyer, Saul Goodman. Talk to my lawyer, all right? And you hear me? I got nothing to say. I told you, you can call my- Christ! You my cell phone number! You have my wife's name! How'd you do it? Talk! Without hesitation, Hank squares up to Jesse and beats his face to a pulp. Even though Jesse's full of rage, aching to put Hank away, Walt instructs him to drop the charges, which you've got to admit must make those bruises hurt even more. What happens now? What happens now? I'll tell you. What happens now? Your scumbag brother-in-law is finished. Number seven, the Combo and Tomas Cantillo debacle. Bounce. If there was ever a lesson for why kids should not get involved with the wrong crowds, then this is it. First of all, Andrea's little brother Tomas Cantillo kills Jesse's friend Combo. It is true that they killed one of your associates. It is possible that they acted rashly. But on the other hand, there was provocation. The man was selling on the territory. Then Jesse learns that 11-year-old Tomas has been taken out by gang members in order to tie up loose ends. Jesse plans to seek revenge on the dealers who carried out the act, but is beaten to the punch by Walt. It's a big mess, with Jesse, as always, fighting with grief, guilt, and the emotional roller coaster of having to psych himself up in order to take someone's life. Number 6. 
the Drew Sharp incident. And it sounds like what you're telling me, Walter, is that you want to do this heist, even if it means killing a couple of innocent men. Is that what you want? Although Gus, Walt, and Todd may not be against involving children in their drug trade shenanigans, Jesse most certainly is. And during the methylamine train heist of season 5, Jesse learns firsthand just how cold-hearted Todd can be. During their expertly executed heist, their efforts to steal without violence go perfectly. <laughs> yes, bitch! Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Until a kid on his dirt bike rolls by. Afraid the kid's presence may lead to the gang being caught, Todd pulls his gun out and, without hesitation, fires on the boy. No! No! Jesse breaks down instantly, in disbelief of what he just saw, and adds another guilt ridden notch to his conscience. Number 5 Brock is Poisoned. Hey, what's up? Even early on in season 1, it's clear that Jesse is in too deep. And there's little hope of him having a normal life. That is, until Andrea and her son Brock come into the picture. Suddenly, there's a shimmering light of hope at the end of the tunnel. And it's safe to say, Jesse would have done anything for them. That makes the moment Brock is hospitalized by an unknown poison all the more dramatic. The doctors, they don't know what it is exactly. It's like, it's like he's got the flu. And it's even worse that Jesse thinks he's responsible, believing the poison to be his own ricin. Brock recovers, and Jesse finds out he wasn't to blame. You, you tell me, tell me what it is you think I did. Brock, why did you poison him? Of course, he later finds out that it was actually Walt. Yes, okay, I had Hugh lift your cigarette, but Walt made me. He told me he was helping you. He was saving you. Number four, he watched Todd take Andrea's life. You're Andrea, right? How can I help you? You know Jesse Pinkman? Right? Well, I'm a friend of his. My name's Todd. Unfortunately for Jesse, his plan of running away with Andrea and Brock was brought to an agonizing end in season 5. Eager to keep Jesse a prisoner, Todd uses Andrea and Brock as leverage. After an escape attempt, however, Todd decides to take Andrea's life. Of course, Todd being Todd, that's not enough. He ties Jesse up in a car and makes him watch, his screams muffled by a rag. Just so you know, this isn't personal. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, in the moments afterwards, Jesse is filled with rage and despair. But it's the days that follow where we see him as a helpless, hopeless, empty shell that really hit us hard. Hey, remember, you're still a kid. <laughs> Number three, he was forced to kill Gail. I got my old job back. At least until they kill me and Gail takes over. So he's their boy, huh? He's their boy. Gail is yet another unfortunate soul disposed of as collateral damage by Walton Company. And even though he was fueling the same criminal underworld with his chemistry skills, you gotta feel sorry for him. Deciding that without Gale, Gus will have to keep him alive, Walt instructs Jesse to pay Gale a visit and take him out. You know what we do. There's got to be some other way. Of course, Jesse is absolutely against this, but does realize that it's their only option. Gun in hand, tears in his eyes, and fighting off every instinct in his body, Jesse faces the pleading Gale and pulls the trigger. You don't have to do this. <sighs> Number two, Jane passed away in bed next to him. I gotta say, this place is awesome. Really? Does it inspire awe? No, I mean, you know, it's great. It's just what I've been looking for. That's what I meant. When Jesse met Jane, the two kindred spirits just kind of clicked. They were staying indoors all day, every day doing drugs, and living like it was their last day on Earth. Fun for the two lovebirds, not so great for Heisenberg. And business. Do right by Jesse tonight, or I will burn you to the ground. 
After a drug overdose, Jane shockingly chokes on her own vomit while sleeping. All the while, Walt watches on, which is a whole other thing. <laughs> Following this, Jessie is absolutely destroyed with guilt, spiraling into a self-loathing heap. Jane's death really was a tipping point for Jessie. And as if it couldn't get any worse, he later finds out about Walt's involvement in her death. Oh man. I watched Jane die. I was there. And I watched her die. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. He was made of sleeve. So that batch that you just cooked was 96%. Kind of figured it deserved a little something. Just when we thought Jesse couldn't be put through the ringer anymore, the last episodes of the series see him reduced to his absolute lowest point ever. Against his will, chained up like an animal, he's forced to make meth for Uncle Jack and his minions. And when he's not cooking, he's left in a hole in the ground, with nothing but the sky to stare at. Seeing anyone like this would be horrible, but knowing that Jesse has completely lost the will to live, especially following the Andrea incident, it's all the more heartbreaking to watch. Take a look at him. Have a gander. This is my partner. Right, partner? Right, buddy? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.